الحمد لله رب العالمين والعاقبة للمتقين ولا عدوان إلا على ظالمين وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له إقرارا به وتوحيدا وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله صلى الله عليه وسلم تسليما مزيدا أما بعد فقال الله عز وجل في كتابه الكريم سبحان الذي أسرى بعبده ليلا من المسجد الحرام إلى المسجد الأقصى الذي باركنا حوله لنريه من آياتنا إنه هو السميع البصير الله سبحانه وتعالى mentions in the Quran glorified is he all praise is due to him the one who took his slave from Masjid Al-Haram to Masjid Al-Aqsa. And regarding that place, Allah Azza wa Jal describes it at that what surrounds it is blessed to show you, to show to him our signs. Verily Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the all-hearing and the all-seeing. Al-Hafidh bin Kathir Rahimallah ta'ala, he says regarding Masjid al-Haram, that is Masjid Mecca. Well, Masjid al-Aqsa, Ibn Kathir, rahimullah, he says, huwa baytul maqdis, alladhi, alladhi huwa ilya. That's another name for it, which is there in Palestine. Al-Ilya, ma'dunul anbiya. It is the place of the prophets. Indeed, a very blessed place, my brothers and my sisters. Inshallah, we'll elaborate upon some of its benefits. Allah Azza wa Jal has referred to that place as sacred. Ya qawmi dkhulul ard al muqaddisa. O people, enter into that sacred place. Allah Azza wa Jal has said that that place is sacred. So you can understand why that is the most fought over real estate in history. That small area, for indeed, it has so much fadl in it. Allah Azza wa Jal, he mentions, Barakna hawla, that we have blessed that which surrounds it. So the ulama, they say, إِذَا بُورِكْ حَوْلَهُ فَالْبَرَكَةَ فِيهِ Mudha'afa. If what surrounds that area is blessed, then the blessings within it are much more and multiplied. Bayt al Maqdis is something which is ajeeb, and what is connected to it is ajeeb, remarkable. Even the story of our messenger Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. ذِيَهَابُهُ إِلَى بَيْتِ الْمَقْدِسِ مُعْجِزَةً How our noble messenger, Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he went to Bayt al-Maqdis, was a miracle. How he got there. وَعَنْ عَنَسِ بِنِ مَالِكٍ رَضِيَ اللَّهُ تَلَا عَنْهُ قَالْ قَالَ رَسُولَ اللَّهِ صَلَّ اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ وَسَلَّمْ أُوْتِيْتُ بِالْبُرَاقِ وَهُوَ الدَّابَ أَبْيَدْ طَوِيلٍ the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he said, I was taken, meaning to Bayt al-Maqdis, from Masjid al-Makkah, with a white long beast. It is said, it was bigger than a donkey, and then it was smaller than a mule. That one stride of this beast, would be to as far as your eye could see. فَرَكَبْتُهُ حَتَّى أَتَيْتُ الْبَيْتَ الْمَقْدِسِ رَوَاهُ مُسْلِمْ Then I embarked upon it up until we reached Bayt al-Maqdis in one night. For those of you that know that Masjid al-Haram is in Mecca and Bayt al-Maqdis is in Jerusalem in Philistine today, and the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam was taken miraculously to this place. Another mu'ajizah is what is collected 
إن صحيح مسلم أن أبو حريرة رضي الله تعالى عنه قال قال رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم قريش تسألني عن مسرايا He said the people of Quraysh they were questioning me regarding my night journey that miraculous journey to Bayt al-Maqdis they were questioning me an asha min Bayt al-Maqdis meaning that if you really claim that in one night you went to that distance then narrate to us some of the things regarding Bayt al-Maqdis because we have amongst us individuals that have been to Bayt al-Maqdis Masjid al-Aqsa so then explain to us and then the messages وسلم, some of the ulama they have mentioned due to the events that occurred that night and we will mention some of them the messages sallallahu alayhi wa sallam he could not recollect and remember fine details for remember in that night journey he also ascended up into the heavens where the salah was legislated so because of that the ulama say that perhaps those were from the reasons he could not recollect and the hadith it mentions that he became angry and frustrated sallallahu alayhi wasallam he did not have the ability to express what he had seen and then the miracle came faqal farafa'u allah li anzuru ilayhi wa ma yas'aluni an shay'in illa an ba'tuhum rawahu muslim he said and then allah caused he raised bayt al maqdis in front of me the whole of bayt al maqdis was brought in front of him la ilaha illallah and then he said there was not a question that i was asked except i could answer them that is from the miraculous things which have occurred on that journey also in the narration in that same narration that long narration he mentions qad ra'aytuni fi jama'ati min al anbiya i saw myself there amongst many of the prophets and some narration it mentions 124000 then in this narration it mentions fa amamtuhum and then i led them in salah meaning the prophets falamma faragtu min as salah qala al qa'il ya muhammad and when i finished off the salah then a person said to me and that is jibril hada malik sahib al nar fasallim alayhi O oh Muhammad, this is the gatekeeper of the hellfire. So give him salams. So I turned to him, but then he began with the salams first. Rawahu Muslim. Also, from the narrations of Bayt al Maqdis, on that night, I was presented two cups, a cup of wine and a cup of milk. And then he looked towards the two cups and then he chose the milk. Muttafaqun alayhi. He said, Oh, Jibreel, he said, All oh, praises to Allah Azza wa Jal that you chose the milk. For had you chose the wine, the milk that you chose is the fitra. But had you chose that wine, then verily your ummah would have been misguided. Fanaja Nabiyu sallallahu alayhi wa sallam min thalik al ibtila. So the messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was granted success from that test. Allah inspired to him what was closer to the fitrah. Also from the fadail that is mentioned regarding Bayt al-Maqdis, qala nabiyu sallallahu alayhi wa sallam la tushuddu rihal illa ila thalath al-masajida masjid hadha wa masjid al-haram wa masjid al-aqsa Muttafaqun alayhi. Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he said, do not undertake a journey to visit masjid except for three. 
He said this masjid, meaning his masjid, which indicates this narration was mentioned while he was in his masjid, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, and masjid al-haram, and also masjid al-aqsa, which is in Philistine. It is the second masjid that was put upon the earth. وَأَنْ أَبِي ذَرٍ رَضِيَ اللَّهُ تَلَا عَنْهُ قَالْ قُلْتُ يَا رَسُولَ اللَّهُ أَيُّ مَسْجِدٍ وُضِعَ فِي الْأَرْضِ أَوَّلْ O Messenger of Allah, which was the first masjid to be placed upon the earth? قَالْ مَسْجِدُ الْحَرَامِ Meaning the one in Mecca. ثُمَّ قُلْتُ ثُمَّ أَيُّ Then I said to him, then there on after, قَالْ مَسْجِدُ الْأَقْصَى He said, Masjid Al-Aqsa. Then I asked him, كَمْ بَيْنَهُمَا What is the time between both of them? Meaning when Masjid Al-Haram was built and then when Masjid Al-Aqsa was built. قَالْ أَرْبَعِينَ سَنَةً رَوَاهُ الْبُخَارِيُّ He said, 40 years. A gap between them is 40 years. And just as we have in the Haramain, our Salah is multiplied in reward then likewise Masjid Al-Aqsa. And the, what the correct narration is regarding that is not 500, is what Shaykh Al-Bani rahimahullah ta'ala he mentions in this hadith. وَعَنْ أَبِي ذَرْدٍ رَضِيَ اللَّهُ تَلَا عَنْهُ قَالْ قَالَ النَّبِيُّ صَلَى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ وَسَلَّمْ صَلَاتُ فِي مَسْجِدِي أَفْضَلُ مِنْ أَرْبَعِ سَلَوَاتِ فِي وَلِنِعْمَ الْمُسَلَّهُ Messenger صلى الله عليه وسلم he said, that the salah in my masjid is four times superior to the masjid of Al-Aqsa. And the narrations and the authentic narrations of Masjid Al-Nabawi is a thousand. So if it's four times, then the reward that you get with Bayt Al-Maqdis, one salah is 250. And then the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said regarding Aqsa, وَلِنِعْمَ الْمُسَلَّهُ and what a great place and a good place is to pray. There are many narrations and it's not enough for me to mention them in one khutbah al Jum'ah. However, وَعَنْ عَبْدِ اللَّهِ بْنِ عَمْرِ أَنِ النَّبِيِّ صَلَى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ وَسَلَّمْ قَالْ لَمَّا فَرْغَ سُلَيْمَانْ إِبْنُ دَعُودْ مِنْ بَنَاءِ بَيْتِ الْمَسْجِدِ سَأَلَ ثَلَاثًا Pay attention to this, my brothers and my sisters. When the Prophet Suleiman, the son of Daud completed Masjid Al-Aqsa, completed building it, then he made dua for three things. He made dua for three things. The first one, Hukman Yusadif Hukmu Azza wa Jal. The first thing that he asked, that his judgment that when he judges between people, when he judges with the hukam, that is in accordance to the judgment of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The second one, he said, Mulkan la yanbaghi li ahadin min ba'di. He asks for a kingdom that no one after him shall have. And we all know from the story of Suleiman alayhi salatu wasalam, the great kingdom that he had. So much so from his kingdom was that he could control the jinns and work with the jinns. That is not allowed for anyone else. That is when the messenger sallallahu alayhi wasalam on occasion when Iblis came to him in his salah, he held out his hand and held him. And then when the companions questioned him there on after, that we saw you hold your hands out like this. What was it? He said, verily, the devil, he came to me in his real form and I took a hold of him and then I remembered the supplication of my brother, Sulaiman, alayhi salatu wasalam. For verily, he was the only one that could control the jinns in that manner. Then I let him go. So that was the second thing that he questioned. And the shahid, for us now is what it comes now. And the third one was, وَأَن لَا يَعْتِي هَذَا الْمَسْجِدِ أَحَدٌ لَا يُرِيدُ إِلَّا الصَّلَافِهِ 
إلا خرج من ذنوبه كيوم ولدت أمه and then he made that third dua and you have to reflect my brothers who is making this dua Sulaiman alayhi salatu wasalam and the third dua was oh Allah the one that intends to come to this masjid masjid al-aqsa to offer prayers that's his intention to come and offer prayers here then oh Allah forgive him of his sins forgive him of all of his sins like he has returned to the day that his mother has given him birth rawahu nisa'i wa ibn majah wa sahahuhu shaykh albani rahimullahu ta'ala wa sallallahu wa barik ala nabiyyina muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi ajma'in alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen wal aqibati al muttaqin صلى الله وبارك على نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين وبعد. and to continue with some of the great benefits, my brothers regarding Beit al Maqdis, Masjid al Aqsa, that place that I have said that over the years is the most fought over real estate, great history there, from Salah Salah Din al Ayubi. From when he conquered it and it was in the hands of the Muslims for many years. Great ulama that have come from that region. It is a place, as Allah Azawajal has informed us, Adad al Anbiya wal Mursaleen Ashu wa Matu fil Bayt al Maqdis. Many of the Anbiya, many of the messengers, they lived there and they died there as well. وَمِنْهُمْ مَنْ تَوَفَّى اللَّهُ عَزَّ وَجَلَّ فِيهِ وَمِنْهُمْ مَنْ رَفَعَ إِلَى السَّمَاءِ and from them there are those that Allah عَزَّ وَجَلَّ raised to the skies. The story of Isa ibn Maryam, that is the region that it occurred. When Jibreel عليه الصلاة والسلام came, when Maryam went to that مكان of شرقية, that شرقية as the مفسرون have said, it is in مسجد الأقصى. A chamber in Masjid Al Aqsa where Jibreel alayhi salatu wasalam he came and told that she would receive a son in that miraculous manner. From them we have the Qissa from the Anbiya that is, is the Qissa of Musa alayhi salatu wasalam. At the time of his death or the prescribed time of his death, when the angel of death came to take his soul. We know the qissa and we know the story that when he struck Malik al Mawt and the Malik al Mawt went back to Allah Azza wa Jal and complained, then Allah Azza wa Jal then told him, Malik al Mawt, to go back to him and to grab an ox and regarding the hairs that will be on there, that will be an extended life for him. Qissa tawila. But the shahid is, then Musa alayhi salatu wa salam said, What will happen to me there on after? And then it was said to him, Falmaut, you will die. And then Musa alayhi salatu was salam, then he said, Falan. So I would rather die now. And then he made that one dua. Because of his people, and because of their kufr, and because of their disobedience, they was not allowed to enter Bayt al Maqdis. That sacred grounds. And because Musa alayhi wa salatu wa salam was mulhaq in that hukam, then he did not see Bayt al Maqdis because of his people. And that is a shahid as well as a point of benefit. That even if you may not be sinning, but if you're around the sinners and in the areas where they sin, then you are under the threat of their punishment as well. Musa alayhi salatu wa salam in after anbiya was from the greatest of anbiya. But yet, because of his people's sin, he was not allowed to go to Bayt al Maqdis, but his heart yearned to see Bayt al Maqdis. So just before his death, he made dua to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And yud niyahu min al ard al muqaddasa. And in one narration it mentions Ramiyatul Hajar. 
that oh Allah bring me near to Bayt al Maqdis bring me near to it to the to, to the distance of a stone throw away so if he didn't be able to go in at least he could see then Allah Azza wa Jal grant him that the messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said that I could show you his grave he said is tahta al kathib al ahmar he said I could show you where his grave is it is by the road in that reddish area sallallahu alayhi wa sallam so why is it that he yearned so much what was the fadl in it and i leave you with this final hadith the messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam he said that if a person was to have land listen to this carefully my brothers and my sisters if a person was to have land the size of a rope of a horse or the saddle of a horse that rope that is required it is tiny if a person had the land equivalent to that size yet he could look down into Bayt al-Maqdis he said that is better than the whole of the dunya and what this whole dunya contains so this is why Musa alayhi salatu wasalam last dua was to become close to that place may allah azza wa jal bless us all to witness such a place may allah azza wa jal likewise bring that place and remove it from the fitting that it's going through and may allah azza wa jal hand it to the hands of the muslims and may the muslims likewise as shaykh al-bani rahimullah ta'ala said that the one that will liberate aqsa is returning back to the quran and to the sunnah May Allah Azza wa Jal bless us and them to be that way and to die that way. Ameen. Wa sallallahu wa barak ala nabiyyina Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi ajma'een.